Oh, Rodney's saying there's no live. Hmm. Hmm. I'm showing we're live now. So I think that there's a long delay uh, with YouTube, but we're showing that we have a good connection. So all our people are looking out for us uh, and I'm, I'm showing that we're good. So I'll wait for that to catch up. I, I don't know how long the, the delay is, but it's looking like, hmm, it looks like YouTube took a little while to catch up. So I'm here, I'm Marie with Living Felt. If we missed that part, here with Don Edwards, we're gonna have a little visit, chit chat and interview today. Um, and visit together. Yep, I hear that. So we're getting communications from the field. It looks like YouTube is on a bit of a delay, and I'm showing something. Um, I'm trying to see what's happening here because YouTube is showing us that everything is okay, and y'all let us know. Uh, Marsha says she's seeing and hearing us from Maine, so that's good news. Um, everyone's saying hi. We're getting thumbs up. So looks like we're, we're all good to go. Thanks all for your patience. <laughs> so I want to give away a few prizes from last week. We did our ginger beard gnome who is still flying out the door so and doing, doing well. So we have two prizes to give away, and those go to Barbara Doyle and Maureen Macedo. Thank you so much for your leaving your comments. And for today, after the live show, we're going to give away prizes um we're gonna give away prizes for people who are in the live chat today that's and, wonderful yeah yeah and i always look forward to seeing the winners yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay good well so i'm here with don edwards of felt so right so let me just pull that up for all of y'all to see um don is here visiting us um from Michigan. Mm -hmm. So how's the weather transition, Dawn? Well, actually, we had really hot weather before <laughs> I came down. And so I told my husband, well, it was just, to, you know, to get me ready for coming down to Austin, Texas, where <laughs> I think the first year I came down, it was 108 with the heat index. So <laughs> it, they said this morning on the news, that it was actually nice and cool outside. It was only going to be like in the low to mid 90s yeah so. <laughs> yeah well, yeah she's getting a bit of reprieve from our, our normal summer because we, we have a little bit of rain <laughs> that's nice now dawn is here filming uh, for, the, for those of you who don't know our online school is uh, feltingtutorials.com and she's here filming you joined us uh, well a couple it's been two years ago mm -hmm. now do you believe that right since i know she, it's gone gone by quickly yeah, yeah since she filmed her first hat class here and that's a double hat class and those hats are behind us on the shelf the the bell cloach and the brimmed hat mm -hmm. so those are in our school and Don's been here filming a new class and we'll show you a little bit about that but I want you to get to meet her a little bit and know her because I've gotten to over the years and it, she's just such a treat to have as a friend and a teacher well I feel the same way about you you're <laughs> A uh, wonderful friend, and thank you so much for having me here, Marie. <laughs> always, always fun, Dawn. Aww. And she's done so well that I think we get a play date tomorrow. Yay! <laughs> Which is glad she's, she's worked really hard on this class. But Dawn, just for a, a, you know, a little insight, maybe mm -hmm. just share with us, when, you, when did you first uh, start to felt? Well, I have to go back quite a, quite a ways. The years go by so fast for me, but it was in 2005, and um, the reason that I can remember that is because my, um, our son Micah was in the fourth grade, so he would have been 10, so it was 2005. Um, and so I started out um, quite by accident, you know, getting into this felting. My friend Peggy Thompson, we've been friends since uh, middle school, we moved to Otsego, Michigan, um, when I was in middle school, and I still remember my home ec teacher, back when we had home ec, um, said, you are going to love Peggy Thompson. You two have similar personalities and you're just going to love her. She's in the hospital right now, but she'll be coming back soon. And um, so isn't that funny, you know, a couple of years later, we, you know, we actually met and became really good friends. So Mrs. Taggett was right all along. Aww. And um, so I have to thank her for that. But Peggy had um, contacted me at one time. She picks out the best presents. And she had contacted me and asked if I might want to take a needle felting class for mm -hmm. my Christmas or, you know, birthday or something. 
And um, I didn't have a clue what it was. Right. But um, <laughs> like but, most of us did. Right. But mm -hmm. we always have a great time together, no matter what we do. So off we went to this class, and I think if my memory serves me right. The first one was a felt flowers class, and then I took another later down the line, um, a needle felted hats class mm -hmm. with um, Suzanne Higgs at Fascinations um, Fiber Shop, which was in Plainwell at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, so then Peggy would call me, you know, from time to time, and we carry on these long conversations, and um, I'd be. <laughs> You know, that sound that, you know. <laughs> crunch. And, we call it crunch, yeah, crunch, crunch. And she'd say, well, I, you know, I know what you're doing. And it was an addiction. I loved, right from the very start, I loved those woolly fibers. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was the start of it. <laughs> that was the start of it. So what about mm -hmm. when you were younger? Um, and um, we, we do have a few photos here that we'll share. Okay. It looks like things have changed a, lo a little bit in our layout. But, uh -huh. John, tell us when you were little, like, what were some of the, the first creative memories mm -hmm. that you have well you know back I was born in 1958 and so you know we played outside a lot and you know a box of you know big box of crayons with a sharpener and that was like the you know the coolest the thing 24 yes it was great deal. right and um the other things I can you know just remember I I always loved you know doing things with my hands mm -hmm. and so I loved play-doh Silly mm -hmm. Putty, do you remember yes, that? Yes, of course. And, uh, and, and the newspaper. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, peeling off the, you know, the image from the comics. And um, so those were some of my, you know, some of my first remembrances of, you know, just doing things that were um, creative. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but now you did more than you did more than just that. You did some dance. Right. Yep. Yeah. Um, I always loved from the time I can remember I've always loved dance um, and so back when we were living in um, New Albany Indiana I was born in Virginia but we moved to Indiana at the end of my first grade year um, and I asked my parents if I could take dance classes and so every Saturday morning my dad would take me to the Billy Weber dance studio in New Albany Indiana and um, and I would take ballet and tap, and I just look forward to Saturdays so much. Um, I actually, I'm, I'm very tall, so I would never be able to, you know, to be a dancer. But um, I still love it to this day. And until Micah um, was young, I still used to take ballet classes. I just really Aww. loved the stretching. And um, now we have a picture of you when you were a little girl yep. dancing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna pop that over. Our little yeah. our little slideshow seems to have gone, but let me let me just okay. put that over here, <laughs> and I can pop. Look how cute that is. Your your yep. little your little dance outfit. Yeah, that brother. was my yep my tap dance um, outfit uh -huh. and that was for I can still remember the song we had a little cane that we got to use with it and we danced to um, Georgie Girl do you remember that song um, and so I used to go watch you know my brother's t-ball games and then he in turn you know would come to watch my recitals <laughs> and, and now you said your dad took you so here's a picture of you yep. and your dad right right oh, look at how so, sweet this yep, is and that your dad been, is tall also he is yep he's six one and um, that would have been an Easter picture. And I included oh. that one in particular. Well, I've always loved that picture. Yeah, I can but, see um, why. But um, I had a hat on. Yeah. I've always oh, loved hats. I didn't and even think also, of that, but you were very dance, dressed. In that dance um, costume, yes. I also, I just loved the, <laughs> I loved costumes and, um, and hats. And I can also remember my um, grandmother, um, wearing, you know, little hats like to um, to church. And um, she and my grandfather, you know, they didn't have a lot of material things. Sure. You know, she was born in 1900, and I can always remember that wow. because she would have been the same, right. you know, age um, as, you know, the year. So, um, but she, but she would wear like these sweet little hats. I wish oh. I had one, but um, that was, you know, it's a great, you um, memory. In fact, I've got a picture of her um, in a um, big cartwheel type hat and it's beautiful. And so I've just, I've always loved hats and I have memories of, you know, people wearing hats. And so that's kind of my, you know, attraction, I think, to 
felting hats. Yeah. So now, what did you did you study art, or how did you come about your creative journey from then, from mm -hmm. crayons and play doh, right? <laughs> Tapped hats. Well, like, yeah. Right. I never. I didn't have any, um, you know, formal art training, but I um, worked in my 20s and 30s at the newspaper in Kalamazoo, the Kalamazoo Gazette, still have really great friends, um, you know, that I keep in contact, um, that I worked with there. And it was a really amazing um, group of people, really creative people. Uh, you know, back then the artists used to draw the art. It wasn't done by computer. Right. And it was so cool. I was just fascinated. Um, so, you know, just exposure to creative people, one, I think. And um, two, just down the street from the newspaper was um, the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts. And so I would take classes there. I took, you know, pottery classes, and then I took stained glass classes so at, um, at a little studio in Kalamazoo, Peeper Stained Glass. And, um, and so I just always liked, you know, um, dabbling in, you know, some form of art. Mm -hmm. um, when I discovered felting, I, one, I, I just loved the fiber, loved the colors, and um, I thought, this is perfect because I can do this at home. I didn't have to have a kiln. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to worry about fumes from, you know, the stained glass. Right. And um, actually, I find a lot of similarities in, um, you know, sculpting yes. felt mm -hmm. and, and clay. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, mm -hmm. And um, two of the people that I took um, pottery classes from at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts, um, Michael Kiefer and Martha Rosenfeld, I'm actually in the same artist cooperative with them now so that's been you know really cool to um you know join a group with people that i have admired for years yeah. their work so. and that's called signature right what's that called it's, again um the signature artist cooperative mm -hmm. and so um i was asked to join them juried in i think it was 2011 and um, that was just quite an honor for me because I had shopped at Signature. It was like a one-month um, shop around the holidays. And um, it was just such an honor to be invited to join them because they're just a really cool group. We're really supportive of one another. All different, um, you know, media of sure, art. I love that. And mm -hmm. I love that. I love mm -hmm. learning about, you know, what they do. And, um, you know, we've all got different personalities, but we all, you know, blend really well. Mm -hmm. And I just love the, um, you know, give and take and feedback of, you know, being in a group of um, really talented right. artists, professional artists. And some of them have been in the Signature Artist Cooperative since the formation of that. And I think Which it's was about, 78. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. I think that's just amazing, you know, <laughs> that, you know, They've been together as a group for all of those yeah. years. It really now, says a lot about them. Last year, y'all did a virtual show, is that right? right? And yep. so what about this year? What will you do? Right. Well, looking um, at doing a regular gallery, mm -hmm. and of course, you know, I guess, you know, that'll, you know, be contingent on how yeah. things, you know, right now I think everything's, you know, still a little bit up in the air about, you know, mm -hmm. everything, but that's the plan um, is to do a regular um, gallery. Right. So, so it's called the Signature. Yep. The Signature Artist Cooperative right. in um, or Gallery. And um, we have a mailing list of about 5,000 people. So they send Fun. out a little postcard every um, year. If you want to be on their mailing list, you can, um, you know, just shoot me a, <laughs> an email or a message yeah, and yeah. I, can, um, I can get that over to them. <laughs> but um, we just find a you know a spot that um, is vacant and rent that for the month and yes. mm -hmm. it's it's you know wonderful yeah yeah we had a I, there was a collective like that where I came from called the Yes Store and then here it's much bigger I uh -huh. mean this is a bigger town but right. Kalamazoo is a little bit smaller which uh -huh. is nice yeah. nice yes yeah, it nice. is it's really nice now it was around 2011 that's when you did around your first show right and I think we have mm -hmm. some pictures right of, from like your early this is really yes. fun her her early yeah. shows especially because I see in this picture uh, mm -hmm. the same a connection that we we both shared but I'll just pop up a couple of pictures here yeah. for you all to see. Really cute. Look at you. Look your, your little <laughs> so, hats. Yeah, that was at the um, Fulton Street Market. And at the time, 
I was needle felting the um, hats. You know, the hats mm -hmm. and then wet felting uh -huh. them. And so I was just doing a little demo in that photo in addition to, you know, selling, yeah. you know, a, a few things. So that that was my first introduction yeah. to. I'm just sharing a, cu a couple yep, of your hats early here. Hats, yeah, yes. they're, they're so fun. They're, <laughs> they're, they're so fun. So you started doing shows and stuff and then um, and then you started teaching. Oh, we, here we have another cute show picture. So tell us about this photo, so, Dawn. Okay, yeah, that was at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts and um, I touched on that briefly. That's where I had taken some classes. In mm -hmm. fact, um, one of the first wet felting classes that I took was with a fiber artist out of Ann Arbor by the name of Loretta Oliver. Um, and so my husband got that for me for a gift, Aww. knowing that, you know, I was just really becoming super interested in the fiber arts. Mm -hmm. And um, so he bought me um, the gift of the class and I didn't know what it was, but I think it mentioned wool and it mentioned fabric. And I don't even, I don't think the word Nuno felt was really In widely yet. known no, then. No, yeah. And so I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think it said something mm -hmm. to the effect of maybe making your own fabric. And so I, um, you know, I went into that. I was so excited. I think we got a pound of wool, oh. and and then just a bunch of silk yardage was included in this workshop. And so I was like, you know, wow. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, that was a weekend workshop, and um, that was really my introduction to wet felting and, you know, learning that you could incorporate different fabrics yeah. into, you know, mm -hmm. in with that. And um, so this was um, a, I think it was a, um, like a springtime um, show that they had a women's um, fiber or women's artist show at the uh -huh. Council Institute mm -hmm. of Arts and they asked if I wanted to take part and so again you know that was just um, a real validation for me that you know that's really cool that I'm getting to do you know something like this at the Kalamazoo Institute of Arts one of my favorite you know local um, museums yeah so and then you you started teaching uh, more mm -hmm. from there let's see if but these are like in a little uh, different order but um, yeah let's talk about let's look at maybe a couple of uh, more of your hats okay. and to tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about now that you've been uh, felting for a while what uh -huh. kind of um, what are your biggest influences in your in your own hat designs well I I take a lot of inspiration, like a lot of artists, I think, from nature. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm out in nature at least twice a day because I've got a dog. So, <laughs> and I, <laughs> I always tell my husband, even though, you know, he sometimes says, oh, maybe, you know, this will be our last dog. And I think, no, I'm going to have a dog until the day I die because uh, there's no way in the world I would go out in Michigan winters if I didn't have a dog right. looking at me like, um, <laughs> it's time to go. So anyway, we have a, a couple of different paths that, that we take and, you know, nature changes, especially in Michigan, you know, yeah. we've got four very distinct seasons. And um, so, you know, sometimes I'm looking at um, lichen or sometimes I'm looking at mushrooms. Love lichen. I do mm -hmm. too. Yeah. Yeah. I really like lichen. I like lichen. <laughs> <laughs> um, or mushrooms or tree bark. Mm -hmm. I'm fascinated by tree bark, especially when it's got, you know, Okay, lichen. how many photos over the years have you filled up your phone with tree oh, bark? Oh, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, on we more should, than one occasion, I've had to should, buy a different phone we because start it was a group. so bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah the tree exactly. bark photos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, when I was in Australia um, teaching... Um, uh, uh, it's probably been at least four years ago, I guess. But Catherine O'Leary um, was, you know, taking me around some because we'd both been teaching at the same um, um, fiber arts mm -hmm. um, conference or workshop. And um, so she had... And I don't know if I included a we photo didn't, in there. We didn't so, upload it. But it's um, it's of a paper bark tree. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just really textural. And I loved those trees mm -hmm. um, there. And Catherine's tree, I'm going to have to tell her to look at this because I'm still fascinated by this. But she said, Dawn, put your ear up to this paper bark tree. You could hear water, like, through the tree. So, like, wow. the water table must have been high or something. But... 
It was fascinating. Wow. So that's what, you know, that piece, and I think I've got it on my website, too, mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. Facebook. Mm-hmm. But um, but anyway, that's, you know, where the inspiration for that came, you know, came from. So yeah. a lot of times if I um, am traveling, I'll come back and make something, um, you know, based on my travels. Nice. Um, just as a, a nice remembrance. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Now, we brought a couple of your uh, really, I guess, most memorable hats, mm-hmm. maybe. So let's, we're going to pull up a, a couple of pictures okay. of, of Dawn's hats here. So tell us about this first one. Let's see. That's the Triton's horn mm-hmm. that we're looking at. Yeah, so that one I did fairly early on. I think it was... Um, like 2010 Mm -hmm. and um so i was you know just starting out making wet felted hats and you know hat blocks are expensive and i you know i had a couple but i was trying to think um you know are there other things that i could block a hat over yeah without having to buy a hat block and so i remembered my aunt um They used to go to Top Seal Beach in North Carolina every year for um, vacation. My uncle would fish and she would go out, you know, collecting shells. And so she gave me a bunch of um, conch shells. And so I thought, I wonder if I could block a hat over a conch shell. That's incredible. And sure Mm -hmm. enough, you can. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, that was, you know, that was just kind of, you know, another one of those, you know, light bulb moments and um, just, you know, a really cool, you know, fairly early on experience for me yeah. to, you know, to realize that you don't have to, you know, buy a hat block. <laughs> <laughs> here's a here's another one. Uh, I think we've called it the crown. For yeah. Let's look, let's so, look at this hat. So that one actually came about um, after I went to a movie um, because I love ballet. And there was a movie with, I think it was Natalie Portman called... Mm-hmm. Um, black swan maybe or i i think that's what it was but it was ghastly it was like all these you know these flashbacks to you know that were horrible and so the only way i could sit through this movie there was some great dance in it but that you know the other part of it was i was just sitting there thinking oh um how can I watch this movie? And I was just thinking, oh, wouldn't it be cool to make a crown, you know, out of felt for her? So that's where that came from. <laughs> Very cool. So while everyone else was, you know, um, crouching down in their seat, I was, you know, thinking, oh, she needs a felt costume. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I love, I love how you process that energy. Yeah. I'm gonna think of that next time. Yeah. How I can do that. And we have one more really uh, fantastic hat from like another inspired by nature because the other one was right. like and also birds you made right that. yeah, yeah I a said vessel birds yeah I love I love um, and this one uh, you actually published a tutorial for in, mm-hmm. in Felt magazine out of Australia yes. mm-hmm. yeah so um, Martin Van Zylen who's the editor for the Australian Felt magazine. Um, had asked if I would be willing to write up a tutorial for for that hat, and I did. Um, and um, she didn't tell me though that the um, pine cone hat was actually going to be on the cover of the magazine. So I subscribed to that. You can imagine how thrilled I was to get that magazine. And yeah. there's my hat on there. So um, yeah, that was just again, you know, based on a walk with the dog. There's um, Um, grove of pine trees out in the nature preserve near our house and I was just looking at you know these pine cones and thinking how cool would that be to be amazing yeah they are there all of them are a little bit different but um, I just thought that would be you know kind of fun to try to replicate something similar to that in felt. I love your gumption, Dawn. You're well, definitely willing to, to, put, to push some boundaries. Well, not there. everything turns out. I, I can tell you that. So, <laughs> And now, and when about, you start, you started teaching about the same time you started exhibiting, is that right? right? Around, yeah. Around 2011. Tw- yeah, 2010, 2011 mm-hmm. um, were really pretty um, instrumental, I think. Um, it's, you know, I... Um, had you know more time on my hands my um you know older son was grown and mike our younger son was getting to be you know in middle school Mm -hmm. and so i just had more time to experiment and um play and um 
in this photo that I think that's the one you're looking at. Um, so here's workshop. a picture of her very first workshop right yep. here. I love it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. um, that I um, have to send a special shout out to my friend Shirley Top because were it not for Shirley, I would not be sitting here right now because <laughs> I really don't, uh, you know, I always hesitated about talking in front of groups of people like speeches in high school, you know, mm -hmm. would just about make me pass out. But um, Shirley, um, every once in a while, she just, she found my website somehow. And I have a little quote on that um, by Rumi. Um, and she really loved um, you know, Rumi. And so she would just write to me every once in a while and say, I um, really like your hats. Would you be willing to, you know, teach a workshop? And I would write back to her and say, well, thank you so much. I'm glad you like my hats, but oh, I, I just don't think I would like teaching. I enjoy making, but I don't think I would like teaching. And um, so, you know, she would say, well, just keep me in mind if, um, you know, if you change your mind. And, um, she would send me a little sweet note every so often and finally I'd had you know a handful of people say you know would you teach a hats workshop we saw your hats somewhere and mm -hmm. you know would you teach a workshop and I thought oh I will try this one time and um, you know and see how it goes and so I rented a um, the basement of a church and I can't tell how many people are in there. It looks exactly. like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight or nine. Yeah, on how yeah, many that tables. sounds about right. Um. And um, and so I taught that workshop, and it was so much fun. And I can remember going home and talking to my husband. Um, and said, I loved teaching. Uh. <laughs> it, was, it was wonderful. And so that was the start of, um, you know, of that. <laughs> so cute. And then she's she's in the, the left of this photo, yes, right? She's right. the, the, the yep, person. Yeah, the black. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, right there on now, the end. Yeah, I guess there's some I guess there's some stream difficulty. And so, y'all, we don't know how YouTube is going to receive this, but we're going to just keep filming uh, because this uh, interview will be uploaded to your class in the okay. school. YouTube is, is seeming to have a day. You never okay. know what's going on in the world. You don't know. YouTube, no. YouTube, YouTube <laughs> has a day. But we're going to run through just a a couple of more pictures here uh -huh. some other workshops this one was in Chile right Is that right yes uh-huh mm -hmm. I I was invited to um, teach in both Santiago and in Kalama um, which is in the um, Atacama Desert region in the north of Chile mm -hmm. and um, I don't speak Spanish so that was um, you know a little intimidating for me and again, my friend Martine Van Zylen um, comes into play because I had told her that, you know, I was a little nervous about, about, you know, accepting the position because of the language barrier. And she said, Dawn, go. If you don't go, you will always regret it. And um, she said, you know, people are good the world over. You'll go. You felt you're you know doing by demonstration anyway and um and she said go and so I did and I would have kicked myself if I hadn't oh. gone I enjoyed that so much the people are wonderful and um I just had a lovely time oh. <laughs> so well we're so glad that you decided to teach well and stretch. I am too thank you <laughs> I'm glad I got to meet you. Because you know what's funny is, um, so Don and I have a couple of similarities, and one of them is one of our very early felting connections. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we had met, I knew that I knew her face. Uh -huh. And it was from Suzanne Hicks. Oh, because, uh -huh. she'd taken some pictures. Well, um, you were... Yep. Yeah, you modeling were her, some of modeling her, yes, her needle yep. felting a hat right, kit, and right. Suzanne Higgs was one of my early felting connections uh -huh. as well, yep. so it's funny that we had that know, connection around is. the same time, because yep. you started felting around the same time, um, yeah, anyway, that she and I were friends, because okay. we used to talk uh -huh. on the phone a lot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So now here's another uh, workshop picture. Everyone making your wonderful vessels. Yep, that was in um, Northern Ireland, and um, just a, again a wonderful experience. So I had been visiting my friend Nicola Brown in Ireland um, 
before heading to Northern Ireland to teach that workshop. So it was doubly fun that, you know, I got to go to both parts of yeah. the country and, um, you know, to see Nicola and this wonderful group of um, felt makers. Oh, and they, then here's another one. I think this is Australia. Right, that's Australia. Mm -hmm. And um, that is, they have um, typically, uh, you know, a big conference. I think they had to cancel this coming year yes. because of, mm -hmm. um, you know, COVID. But um, it's a wonderful fiber conference. In fact, that year that I was teaching there, um, my friend Elizabeth Lindsay, who lives in, um, in Michigan, had said, so when's your next, you know, workshop that you're teaching? And I said, well, the next one I'm going to Australia to teach. So she didn't take my class, but she said, well, if you're going to Australia, I'm going to Australia. Oh! And so um, she registered for, um, for a class there, and um, we got to, you know, um, visit a little before, you know, before heading over to the workshop and get to spend a lot of time and everyone loved her and we just had, you know, had a great time and oh. shared experiences there. But I thought that was so cool, you know, that she wound up um, coming over also. That's so fun. <laughs> That's so fun. And then I think we have one more here. And this was one of the workshops that you did yep. in our last shop. Uh, we did... Um, Eco printing, but we did this over dyeing, which was right. Where we did the right. dyeing. Yes. Yep. Kind first. of first. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We, we we had some interesting discoveries in that, and some things unexplained things happened right. too. Right. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like when blue turns brown. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yep. Yeah. Really, really, really fun. Really fun. So uh, well, you Dawn, always have fun at Living Felt. So. <laughs> Yes, Dawn does eco printing classes and wet felting hats and vessels and Nuno felting and uh, uh, other textural samples, fun stuff like yeah, that. I, yeah, I just love making and um, so the sky's the limit, I think. You you can never make every, you know, everything that you have going through your mind and so it is great for people who have a curious mind. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we show uh, maybe a couple of these hats that, that you brought sure. here, Don? Let's yep. show. These are uh, two hats for uh, Don's upcoming class in, in our school, feltingtutorials.com. Um, and I know that uh, people who are watching live are getting a lot of glitching, so it may be um, it may be difficult, but it doesn't seem like they're, they're too far behind us. Mm -hmm. um, but let's look at these hats, Dawn. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, uh, why don't we spin that, that purple one first? I'll give us a little, right. um, little close-up. So here's this lovely purple hat uh, that Dawn has created uh, for the school. And this is the one we actually recorded live over right. the last mm -hmm. two days. Um, we named this uh, hat Hidden Treasures. Yeah. Um, and this hat we decided is good for someone who maybe has some introduction to wet felting, mm -hmm. um, and wants to explore things a little bit more, maybe even a little, uh, experience felting over resist, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is one fancy hat, Dawn. Well, I just, I think <laughs> it's like something that you could wear to the grocery store I know. or, you know, scrubbing the floors or really what have you. <laughs> and and Dawn does model the hat in the class for you. She does, so, she does model. While it's wet. Hat. Yes. Even. While yes. It's, while yeah. it's wet. Yes. It's, yeah. it's a must that you have to put on a wet soggy hat. Right. If you yes. make your own hat. Yes. Yeah. It absolutely is. And then we have another version, which is a little less fancy, but mm -hmm. every bit as fun. So let's, uh, yeah, we'll, so we'll hold this one up for you here too. And Don will spin those around that around like side by yeah. side. Oh, we'll we'll bring see. it over. There oh, you go. Right here. A little less maybe blingy. Bling yeah, right. if yeah. you will. And so yeah, really the you know the colors that you choose for the hat. Um, this one's much more muted than than this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love the colors. But yeah. Again, they... I've still got you know I've still got beading and um, you know in here, but it's just uh, you know different colorway yeah, that creates. Yeah. Not as much contrast. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. And yeah. the thing with um, with these hats that um, you know we mentioned in class 
is that no two are ever going to be alike. Sure. You know, you're not, I could, if I wanted to, I wouldn't be able to replicate, you know, one exactly, exactly because mm -hmm. it's just going to depend on where you place your fabrics and how you scrunch it and all of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and they, there's actually, they're, they're pretty lightweight depending on the inclusions right. that you do. Uh -huh. They don't take a lot of material. No, uh -uh. And in this class, Dawn really breaks it down. So if you have some introduction to wet felting, mm -hmm. and we have, um, three free classes in the school for mm -hmm. wet felting over resist. One, you make a beanie. Uh -huh. One, you make a the fire bowl, which is very simple. Yeah, the fire it's bowl. beautiful. It's simple. Yeah, though. Yeah, yeah, easy. And um, then there's the making the cowl. So uh -huh. any of those might be a good primer for taking one of Dawn's hat classes. Mm -hmm. I yeah. Th yeah, I think if you d if you did um, especially like the beanie class because it's a hat, mm -hmm. I think you would definitely be able to. Um, be successful in you know mm -hmm. making something more sculptural and a yeah more and you don't need a hat block no. for this class you don't need anything other than your own noggin right yeah. right yeah yeah and it's really a lot of fun mm -hmm. and a lot of you can make them for a lot of different personality types you, you really can <laughs> and I think you know for me a lot of times I just want to create a sculpture and um, so you know so everything that I make doesn't have to be something that I'm going to wear to the grocery stores. <laughs> but but I, I just enjoy the challenge of making um, sculptural pieces because I consider hats to be just a small, and I like that I can do small things, mm -hmm. um, you know, at home. Yeah. Um, so I just consider them to be a, a small wearable art or yeah. just a, a sculptural piece yeah you know? and I can attest to the fact that Dawn will fuss over all the little parts she, if I left her <laughs> in here by herself she'd still be fussing I would adjusting yeah. a ruffle here and there I, de I definitely would in fact probably you know after seeing it on the screen I could <laughs> yeah she's still... trying not to fuss with it right yeah, now but I'm looking and thinking <laughs> oh that needs a little more stretching and <laughs> <laughs> oh, so fun. So people are really liking your, your color choices and saying they want to give it a try. Oh, they great. They love the colors. They would love to see one of the hats. Teresa says, I would love to see one of those hats on someone's head. So do you want to put one on? Um, no, you're going to yeah, fuss I, over how it, I will. How it's positioned. Yeah. I'm going to put my headband on. So now, that... And we didn't bring a picture of this, but you were, well, we were, it's too long of a story. I won't do that one. <laughs> Which, <laughs> I was, was going to okay. say the, the Queen's Milliners. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> So well, because going on. let's see, can I see? I don't know no. which way I've got it on. Where do you here. want the baubles? I think kind of in the yeah. front. Does that look? That looks good. But now you have to face this, okay? So everyone can see how beautiful. I don't know if I've got it on the right way. <laughs> <laughs> it looks lovely on you. Absolutely lovely. Um, so, uh, Marcia says, I don't wear hats, but I would definitely wear those. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah. very nice. <laughs> Tammy says, what's a fire bowl? Sounds interesting. Tammy, go to the school. Yeah. Uh, it's a free class, wet felting a fire bowl. I call it a one ounce wonder. Um, so it's very easy to make. Does, that uh, has lots so of fun. on it, doesn't it? No, does, that doesn't. Viscose. Okay, viscose. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. knew it had some um, beautiful, shiny exterior. Uh, and Marcia says, I'd like to know where Dawn buys groceries if she wears hats like that. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, the Piggly Wiggly, you know, what have you. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Well, this, uh, so this class, uh, Dawn has just been filming for the last uh, couple of days. I'm going to roll just a couple of more, let's see, I'm going to uh, just pop up on the screen here, a couple more hats of hers, because if you take a hat class with Dawn, I want to tell you that you're going to, you know, you're going to walk away with some really nice skill, and that she really does take a nice, refined approach, but it's non-threatening. She makes it very easy, and this hat, that I'm showing you here, the, the black and red one, is very similar to uh, the hat you made in the current class, mm -hmm. which is the, the right. meeting was uh, black and white. Right. Oh, and this yep. is a beauty here, too. That Donna. one, Absolutely. I um, won the Mad Hatter's contest the oh. year that I made that. And again, it was, you know, one of those things. I I guess I must not pay enough attention to you know contest deadlines, but somebody said you should enter you know a hat in that contest, and so I made that and um, and it um, won the contest that year. 
So amazing. And then here's a hat very similar to mm -hmm. the one we're showing right. in person today. Yep. It's not the same one, but no, it's, it's similar, but isn't it? That one's got a little more turquoise um, mm -hmm. in it. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Just beautiful. And then, oh, here's one more. Your lovely, lovely model and a beautiful, beautiful hat. I love the, in addition to the sculptural pieces, but I love the 20s and 30s fashions. Oh, I would love to step back in time yeah. and um, and be able to wear some of you know those fashions. I so. think you could, Dawn. There's no rules. Okay. You can All just right. start today. Well, I noticed that you had a time capsule in the back, and I was just like, <laughs> pop myself back to 1920. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I really just wanted to share share Dawn with y'all, and uh, if there's any questions you have, um, oh, so someone wants to see inside the purple hat. This one? Uh, Carol, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how we say your name, wants to see inside the purple hat. So that's going to be you difficult see to see. I don't think so. Um, very difficult to see inside yeah. with our cameras. You know what we can do, Dawn? Let's go overhead here. So uh, okay. let's, yeah, let's go overhead, and I will cut to that mm -hmm. and so not a bunch of mystery in there no? it's going to fit your head and you right. have a few folds where you would expect to see uh -huh. folds yeah <laughs> yeah pretty pretty simple um oh lots of compliments on your photography and someone is celebrating that you're coming to a place near them in Massachusetts. So you oh, have yes. upcoming Oh, we're not sure we said you're not right sure. not mm -hmm. not positive but um uh and I think I mentioned to you this morning I am not a techno wizard and so I haven't been able to update my website so I put classes on my Facebook page right now until I'm able to figure out how to do my website over right. again so mm -hmm. if there are any techno wizards out there looking to redo <laughs> someone's website <laughs> but you can check her Facebook right right I put, check, yep, check I her put them on my Facebook um, yeah page and, so do, go look for Don Edwards on Facebook and felt so right mm -hmm. on uh, Facebook and Don underscore Edwards on Instagram right. as well mm -hmm. so if her website's not up to date check her out follow her on Facebook definitely um, come join us at the school you can register for free we have free classes so you can evaluate whether that's good for you mm -hmm. we have some new classes coming up this year if y'all are just joining us for the first time so dawn's classes will be coming up later this fall we might september we have uh, a few more classes in production right now for those of you who already know uh, laura ricks was here a couple right, of weeks back, right. uh, doing two landscape classes mm -hmm. prior to Beautiful. that Irina Hughes came and did the elephant. So. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. I, uh, I was looking at that out in the shop and I can't, I just can't even say enough about how wonderful uh, that is. Amazing. Yeah. And so there's a few, there's a few classes mm -hmm. in the pipeline and Dawn's are going to be coming up as well. So look for them. I'm hoping by October that we'll be able to um, have your classes yep. um, up and running. Look for them. But look, y'all, she has a wet felting hat class there now. If you mm -hmm. want to experience Dawn's teaching, you can sign up. So this, uh, and you can make your hats any colors, but the blue hat behind us, if you want to do a brimmed uh, cloche or a mm -hmm. Bell cloche, and she also teaches you how to nun a felt. That beautiful flower. I'm going to uh, bring this hat here for a second so y'all can see. Um, but this is this is like the other beaded hats that she showed you. These hat classes are available now. And the nice thing about the classes in the school is they're streaming, they're on demand, they're on your schedule. Once you sign up, and you're in that class, it's yours to take. You can watch it on your phone, you can watch it on your tablet, you can watch it on your computer. You can stream it to your television if you know how to do that. I, I know. actually know how to do that. Do. I too, yes, I watch you on you know on my full screen for Willy Wednesday. <laughs> Some people With, do. I've got a Chromecaster that Micah left behind at the house. <laughs> So cute, so cute. So you can watch these classes there. You can start, you can stop, you can take notes, and there's even a class chat so you can ask the, the teachers questions. And, and I uh, love that, and I love when they send photos yeah, of what can, they've made. It's so, it's so cool. You can post photos, yeah. you can earn badges for completion, and you even get to earn certificates if you complete them. And so if we're behind on certificate issuance, please forgive us. We try and check it at least <laughs> once a week to issue uh, very fancy certificates to people, but you have to post a finished picture of your project in the class chat in, in order, order to get, get it. yeah it's like a diploma exactly yeah and it's yeah. very official right one. yeah validated yeah. you could put it on your resume <laughs> They should. They should. Look, yeah. Fairy Ann is here with prizes. Yay! Yay! 
<laughs> Anne's been putting names in her pumpkin bowl, and so here's, we're gonna give away some prizes. Okay. Are you ready? I am. Okay, so yep. Dawn and I are gonna draw names, okay. so you draw a name. Now, no Anne, peeking. Anne usually closes her eyes when she does it, so I'm gonna do that too, so. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to draw a name. Thank you, Fairy <laughs> Anne, for the pumpkin bowl. And um, so I'm going to tell you what you're going to win today. So today we're giving away two prizes. Uh, you get to pick your prize. So you can win a kit for making the Grab and Go Beanie, which is a free class in the school, um, or our Nuno Felt Cow slash Neck slash Ear Warmer thingy, yeah, which is beautiful. another free cool. class. Yeah. Super easy projects. Well, you're going to win a kit in your color way of choice and I think we have like Anne said 10 colors now you can choose yeah. from so lots of fun and we're gonna give away these two prizes right now so you just have to tell us what you want who do you got okay I have got Karen Cott Karen Cott and Yay. I have Lynn Lewis oh so congratulations yeah hold him up so they know Oops. we're not fibbing okay <laughs> <laughs> congratulations congratulations gals and thank you everyone for sticking with us yeah. I know the streaming the buffering has probably <laughs> been an issue and for the you know handfuls of people who have stuck around thank you so much uh, if YouTube doesn't upload a good version we will we've recorded it all this interview <laughs> will be in Dawn's class so make sure that you uh, follow us on Instagram share us what you're making Please join our Facebook group on Facebook. Such a nice group. Oh, it is a it nice is such group, a huh? supportive group. It really is. You can shop with 